Good morning, folks. Welcome to Prairie Girl and Cowboy Homestead. Today, I have my apple juice that was actually frozen, what was left of my um, juice that I made out of my peelings when we did our apples up last week, and it's been frozen. So today, I'm going to go ahead and thaw it out. I'm going to find some more um, pectin. I've got jars in the dishwasher going, sterilizing. You can hear that in the background. Um, I'll fill my water bath canner with water and a little bit of vinegar splash and um, measure out my sugar and I'll be ready to make my apple cinnamon jelly just out of peels and that makes such a good good yummy jelly. So this might take a little while to thaw out. I've got it on low heat. And then I want to re-measure it to make sure I've got the right measurement to do a double batch of jelly. And that's okay because it's got time to thaw out. I've got the jars sterilizing, washing in the dishwasher. And I've got a few other projects going on around in here in the house. And so this is just one thing I want to definitely get done today. Get it out of the way. Um, it's a good jelly and I hate to let this go to waste so and I need this kettle again so it's time to get it done so I was in the tractor supply a couple days ago and I have been eyeing these little canister um, containers since way before Christmas probably last October when they first came out in the store um, the other day when I was there they had them marked down and there were only two on the shelf and I thought I'm going to take them home and try them for canisters on my bar because I'm always using flour and it's always readily available. Here I've got some organic sugar. So I'm just going to give these a try and see what I think. Um, if I can find another one, I'm going to go ahead and put oatmeal in it and have it here easy access. And it just gives me the feel of an old mercantile store. And I kind of like that. So while my juice is thawing out, I thought I'd go over the recipe with you. To start with, all I did was took the apple peels, um, I boiled them with water on them, and I ended up getting, I believe it was a total of 16 cups of juice. So the first batch, this is for a single batch, and what I'm doing is two double batches. So I have done eight cups of juice, one cup of the cinnamon candy, which is these little red hots, and I think there's enough in here to do one more batch. Um, I did, yes, nine cups of sugar, and then two boxes of pectin, right here. So this is doubling, is what I did on my first batch. So now I'm going to do this again, um, and when I double it, I get seven pints to go into the water bath canner, which works really good. So what I start with is boil the juice with the candy and the pectin. Both are in the juice. And you wanna stir that because those candies will scorch on the bottom. So stir that while it's coming to a boil. Boil it a good five minutes. And then I have the sugar all measured off and I will dump all that sugar in at once, stirring it. And keep stirring it, bring it back to a boil um, boil it another three to five minutes, a good three to four minutes anyway, and then I'll pour it into my hot sterile jars and I'll water bath can it. Pints are 20 minutes and that is it folks. It's very easy, very simple, and you haven't let those peelings, apple peelings, go to waste. So put this in your recipe box for when you are doing anything with apples even if you are peeling your apples for your kids, save those peelings, put them in a little Ziploc, stick them in your freezer, and once you get enough built up in your freezer, you can take those out and put some water with it, boil it, make this apple juice, and go ahead and make this apple cinnamon jelly. Well, I'm still waiting for my apple juice to slowly thaw out, and the dishwasher is still running sterilizing my jars. I have a project that I still haven't completely finished that I have set up here in my kitchen and I need to get this job done. Um, I did get big bags of pecans and walnuts the other day from the Costco order 
And so I'm going to go ahead and seal some of these up so they're ready to go to the root cellar. And if you haven't got the food saver with the jar adapter lids, there's two sizes for the regular and the wide mouth, you're missing out because it's, it's handy. I don't have room in my freezer for nuts. And nuts will keep a long time in your freezer and that's probably the best way. But like I said, I don't always have that extra space. So I do it in jars. I seal them with my food saver and then they go out to the root cellar, which right now is like 36 degrees. And um, these will go to the back part of the shelf. The older nuts will come forward. I always try to keep several jars of all my nuts always stocked on my shelf so that I never run out. We use nuts for everything, for our oatmeal, for baking, for just a snack in the evening. Um, and I like to make a trail mix with some. And, you know, there's just so many things. This week, I am hoping to make a granola. I have some sliced almonds and I'm going to be making a homemade granola. And we just use a lot of nuts. Um, so... I've got some pecans, and I'm going to fill my jar up, but I'm kind of just waiting on my little jelly project right now, just letting that juice thaw out so I can measure it to see how much I've got, and I don't like to just twiddle my thumbs, so here's a project I can do and wait for that to happen. Okay, so we're going to fill two jars of the walnuts right now and what's left will just go in my jar that I've got right now on the cupboard so we have some nuts still because it's almost empty but we've got two jars full of the pecans now next we'll take the walnuts and the walnut bag is just a little bit bigger than the pecans so we're just going to go ahead and fill two quarts. I, actually, it might end up being three quarts of my walnuts before I get that all done because there's just so many more. And I've just found that they really keep a long time this way for me, especially if they're in cold storage. We'll shake them down a little bit. A little bit more in there. Okay, there's one of those. Another jar here ready. So yeah, I'm thinking three quarts of the walnuts will be done. I'm ready to go to the grip cellar. Shake them down a little bit more. And I'll definitely be getting another jar over here for the walnuts. But for now, we'll do these. And I just, you know, brush off the dust so it doesn't affect the seal. Now again, if you missed my video before, if your older seals are not bent, this was a 2015 seal, and a lot of times I save them and use them like if I'm putting something in the refrigerator, these work. You can use these to seal your jar of nuts. You can pop that jar open, that seal, and get what you need. You can put this same seal back on here and have a good seal with it. So, okay, we're gonna go with the wide mouth. And it's a little noisy, but it does not take long at all. And it is so handy. And it's just a cheap, food saver that I picked up at our local um, hardware store. I want to say like 30, 35 bucks or something. It's been a few years now. Um, the adapters, I did go right to the food saver website and order one of each, the regular size and the wide mouth. And as soon as the lights go off on the food saver, which they are now, you pop your steel, take off your lit adapter, and look here, the seal, it's perfect. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just trying to get all these little odds and ends. I do have 
some crackers, Ritz crackers. I want to do this too. I've got, a, uh, I've done Cowboys caramels, and these will keep for a long, long time. I've done the pumpkin seeds. I've got chia seeds done. I have flax seed done. And so, we'll turn this one on. There's so many things you can do. Um, if you're going to do a powder, like a powdered milk or um, even cornmeal, I would suggest putting a coffee filter between the seal, the tin seal, and the, the powder itself, just so that you don't suck any um, powder up into your hose. There we go. There's so many things. Cookies, chips. Um, chocolate chips. I've done, oh, um, my dehydrated, um, I guess I don't have any here, but if I want to save my dehydrated um, orange peels or my tomatoes to keep them just a little fresher, if I've got quite a few open, I'll do it with that, with my tomatoes. Um, so there's so many things. That the it's, it's endless with what you can use. You do not do a regular canning with this. This is just your dry products. But I have found that I love doing the nuts. It works really good for that. So we've got one more jar to go. This one's about done. There we go. Seals off. It is the coolest thing. If you've not got this on your homestead yet, you definitely want to check into it. It's worth it. Um, I also put my dehydrated, um, like the peas that I did from the garden this summer, um, zucchini. Um, what else do they do? I've dehydrated onions and done this. Um, cabbage. You can really dehydrate cabbage will fit in a jar if not more um, so and that keeps on your shelf if it's sealed like this and you can add the little moisture um, oxygen moisture packets if you want I just don't I've got some I've never felt like I've needed to um, so it's all worked out really good that way but there we go so all I'm gonna do now is I will take a marker and remark on top of here and put my date on here just so I have an idea of how long they've kept in there and it's easy folks look at this walnuts pecans pumpkin seeds my chia seeds because I get this in bulk and it's too much to have out at once so what I do is fill a pint sized jar and put the rest in jars like this and take I'll take them to the root cellar and here's the flax seed I was wishing I'd have gotten the flax seed ground I did not realize that it does not get the benefits until you grind it I have been putting them in my um, protein bites which um, my daughter told me you don't get the benefits until you grind it so I'll have to find me a grinder maybe an old coffee grinder or something and go ahead and grind this up. I mean, it's not going to hurt you whole. It's just um, you're not getting your benefits. And like I said, here's Cowboy's Caramels and those. I know the last jar he opened, they sat on the shelf almost three years under a seal. He opened them up and they were soft. The caramels were soft. Now these weren't as soft when I put them in here, so I'm curious to see if they will get softer or if they'll stay that consistency. Um, if you buy the candy, if you like to have it stored on your shelf, you know, for, for whatever reason, if it's a snack or baking, whatever, um, I would watch the sales like at Halloween time or now Valentine's Day is coming up. You know, even right after Valentine's Day, they're going to have a sale probably more than likely. So grab up your stuff then. Um, if you've got a sale of chocolate chips, um, coconut, anything like that, if you find a sale on your dry 
baking ingredients, um, I would go ahead and get them and I would seal them this way and put them in a cold storage. You don't need a root cellar either. If you've got a room that you can keep extra cool, which I do, I have a spare room here that I did turn into a pantry. Because most of you know, we just built our root cellar this last past summer. And so we are still just working at filling it up. But I do have a spare bedroom that I turned into a, a farmhouse pantry. And I keep the shade on it. I keep a window cracked, especially in the winter time and keep the door shut it's dark in there and it stays so every you walk in there and everything is nice and cool so you know just find you a spot that's the coolest place in your house if you do not have a root cellar or a cool area and just try to keep them out of the dark out of the light and in a cool dark spot and they will keep for quite a while um i have not yet to this day had any of the nuts go rancid but that too is I use a lot of nuts and I keep rotating and they've hardly ever now like this jar would not last maybe in a year I will open this at the longest um, so it's just when you open it taste one if it's stale get rid of it but more than likely if you do it right seal it and put it in a cool dry dark place they're gonna keep a good year I would say at least so anyway I'm gonna go check my apple juice over there my dishwasher is still running sterilizing um, but I want to get this little job done I need to measure out everything measure out the sugar and get this little cannon project done with and out of the way um, I'll see how my day goes possibly we'll do a jar of um, I've got uh, I think some navy beans or chili beans i don't remember what i had on my cupboard that i could go ahead and do in a, in some quart jars too but we'll see it's saturday i'm trying to do some catch up around here too still after being gone a couple days this week that really sets you back more than you really think um, i've got laundry going and cowboys out in the root cellar or not root cellar out in his shop starting the 10 by 40 room he's going to start building a wall for that and so our weather is going to be decent for the next till I believe it said February 8th. We still have um, temps into the high 40s, 50s, maybe a couple of days in the high 30s. For Montana, that's very rare for January going into February. So I guess we're just going to cross our fingers, hope for more moisture this spring. Maybe we won't have the severe wet, uh, winter snows but definitely will need some moisture in the spring so we'll be praying for that but i hope everybody has a good weekend i'll be back real soon with some more on our jelly making project so i'm bringing you back i'm still waiting on the apple juice to thaw out and it's almost there i'm almost ready to go do the jelly but i wanted to show you what i've been working at while i'm sitting here i had little jars of m m's in my pantry already that needed to be sealed they're sealed and i did put the ring back on just so that if we pop it open we've already got the ring with it but it is on sealed so i went ahead and i'm going through leftover candies that have been around since the holidays that have not been eaten so i've got three jars of the different m ms out there we've done a big jar of cinnamon bears and those will stay soft in this jar for years um another thing i did was i had a big container of the christmas m m's bulk and so i've sealed a couple big jars of that they will go probably to the root cellar this was some leftover candies that nobody was eating and they're still really good for your little kisses so i've sealed those up they will be fine till next Christmas. These I did the other day. These are just your little vanilla wafers. Sometimes I have a recipe, like if I want to make the banana pudding dessert, and I never have these on hand. So I've got three jars of these done, and those will keep. Um, here was another container of chocolate-covered caramel that wasn't getting touched, and it's just a temptation for us right now. So I've sealed it up. It's going out to the root cellar. And now I've just done 
two packages of milk chocolate chips that fit in one quart jar. These will go out to the reseller for backup. And now I'm going to do a jar of Ritz crackers. And what I've done is I've just cut the top open on this sleeve. And the best way to do this to start with is to put your sleeve right into your jar, tip it up, and get as many in there as you can to the top, like that, and then start filling the side in, like that, around that sleeve. I can set this down careful. I'll open another sleeve up. And these Ritz crackers will stay really fresh. Here again, I buy them in bulk from Costco. And so when they come, there's a lot of sleeves in that box. Way too many to use up right away, but you don't want them going stale. So I just fill the little side with extra crackers. I'll hold the stack in while I shake those down in gently so you don't crush them up. And I'll probably get a couple, three jars of these crackers like this before I'm done. But like I said earlier, I'm going to have to find some more jars because I'm going through the jars like crazy right now with what canning I'm doing and um, doing all this food saving process right here. There, stick a few more down in there, like that. We're getting pretty close. I don't want to crush them. Almost get two sleeves, not quite. Okay, maybe one. I think that's about it. So that's about as full as I can get a jar. But this is going to be so nice to have backup on my shelf. It's cheaper to buy in bulk. Let's see, I'm going to use this one here. Cheaper to buy in bulk and um, try to put it on your back shelf for later use. But this is a good way for sealing a lot of things like this. and it just does not seal go ahead and get rid of that one you know there might be just enough of a dent in it that's not making a connection but for the most part all these old seals will still work unless there's just really a have a bend dip to them this is almost ready there we go Ritz crackers for the shelf and these actually do not need to go to the root cellar these can go up into my old pantry cupboard up here and we've always got fresh crackers if we need and i've got probably i could probably do three or four jars of these at least three for sure and have them on the shelf because i bought such big packages for christmas time um, to use um you know like with cheese and salami and there's just so many left that i want to make sure and get them sealed and keep them fresh until Cowboy and I need them for an, a late night snack with some cheese or salami again. So, or a spread, um, but they're gonna be on my shelf. I don't have to worry about putting it on my list, going to the store, you know, the next time and grabbing what I need. From here, I will stock my shelves. And as I get lower, before I use this jar, I will put on my list that I need chocolate chips. I will use these first. And then the new ones will go into a jar seal. I've always got them on the shelf. They're fresh for the next time I need to use them. So just some tips from the homestead today. Okay, my juice is thawed out. I have my canner, water bath canner with water in. I'm going to dump a couple of glugs of vinegar in there. That just keeps my jars clean because of our water. It will leave a white film on them and that will just keep my jars looking really clean when I bring them out. Definitely <laughs> a canner, new canner, water bather is on my list. It is so rusty 
And same with my rack is getting so rusty. But the whole thing, I just need to break down and buy me a new water bath canner. But I'm trying to get as many more uses out of it before it really gives out on me. So here I've got measured out eight cups of the juice. I've dumped in my red hot candies. And I've also dumped in my pink pectin, excuse me, my pectin. And so I'm going to stir this around and cook it on um, medium, probably medium high, and stir at all times so it doesn't scorch the bottom because your candies will scorch. So I'll be stirring this and we'll boil it for probably five minutes at a, a pretty good boil. And then we'll be back to add the sugar. Okay. We are about ready to make apple cinnamon jelly. And what I've got in here are my eight cups of apple juice that I boiled um, out of my peelings. So I've started with the juice. I've added my two packages of pectin. I've got about a cup of your red cinnamon um, candies. And over here, my hot water bath is warming up the waters in it with vinegar. Back here, I've got my seals and my lids warming up. I have my sugar measured out, ready to go in. But first, this has to come to a rolling boil for about five minutes. And then I'm going to dump the sugar in all at once and stir to rolling, rolling boil again. And then I will let it go for another three, four minutes for sure, boiling. And then it will go into my hot sterile jars and into the water bath canner for 20 minutes. And this is how easy it is to make apple cinnamon jelly from just your cores or your peelings. It's just your scraps that normally go to your compost, go to your chickens. And actually, it still goes to your chickens or your compost because... You've got the peelings after you've taken it out of the, the juice that you've made. So you're just getting one more step of something made out of those apples. And this is such a good jelly. So I just had to come out and check because my house was getting hot. <laughs> and I've been letting the stove go out, the wood stove. But we have about, what, 50, 53 degrees out here on a Montana January day it feels like spring so just had to check because I knew it was warming up outside because my house was getting hot and it's a nice day I should be outside doing a project out here but I need to get that jelly done okay we've got this almost to a full rolling boil and I'm gonna set the timer for five minutes and I'll stir it off and on and make sure it's not going to stick with those candies and scorch but oh it smells good and cinnamony and appley it's a good jelly okay it's rolling boiling for five minutes I'm going to dump in all my sugar at once and get my spoon in there and start stirring again right away And let that dissolve in that hot syrup, hot juice. And I'm going to keep stirring this now. I'm going to bring it back up to a boil. And make sure this is dissolved and not scorching. But I'll bring it back up to a boil and boil it another four minutes at a rolling boil. And then we're ready to go ahead and put it into our sterilized jars. Okay, we are back up to a boil again after I put the sugar in and the sugar is all dissolved. And I'm gonna set our timer now for four more minutes. But it's pretty much a, a boil. I might give it just a little bit, but see, it's starting to pick up. So we can go ahead and set the timer for four minutes and I'll stir it a little off and on and we'll let it boil four minutes. Then it goes right into the hot sterilized jars. Okay, we're all done. We're putting it into the sterilized jars now.
and they're nice and hot the jars are so they are not going to break you want to check your jars on the top for any cracks or on the sides you know make sure you don't have any um, jars that are ruined so I'm just going to keep filling this up it's a little tricky with just one hand and as I get lower down into the kettle I'll need both hands so just wanted you to see then I'll put on my seals and they'll go in the canner so this time I only got six pints I've got just a little bit in here just for a taste later but now what you want to do is and I'm going to do this after I shut the camera off but is gently wipe your seals because you can see they're sticky jelly and you want to make sure the tops of your jars are clean and so I will do that before I put these seals on and then turn your your screw lid on just finger tight not tight tight just finger tight lightly stick it in your water bath and set it down in the hot boiling water process for 20 minutes shut your canner off bring that rack of hot jelly jars up out of the water and slowly move them to your cupboard so remember this syrup is very hot very hot you can really burn yourself so here I'm going to put my seals on I have wiped off all my rims really well and here I'm using my little magnet to bring it out of the hot water and I will slowly put the jar lids on too and screw them on finger tight Oops trying to watch this through my camera just like that and just finger tight it's hot very hot so I think I'll just go ahead and put the seals on for now and when I come back we'll put it into the canner okay we're ready to put them into the hot water and I use my little jar grippers and I always start out with my center one to kind of balance and for all those that do a lot of canning this is just common sense but you know there's folks out there that really don't know how to do this and sometimes watching a little clip kind of gives you the confidence to give it a try because it's not hard you just want to get recipes and follow them and you know reread your directions step by step reread them again and just follow through so I'm only going to end up with six jars which is okay that's a taste for us and we'll put that in there and the next process I will take these handles one on each side and slowly lift it down into the hot water that water is going to cover these jars you want it to cover a good inch or two inches and then I'm going to bring it up to a boil and have the lid on and then I will set my timer then at that point after it's rolling boil for 20 minutes and then that is it they will be done so the jars are in the counter and as you can see there's not quite enough hot water so here's a tip the kettle of hot water that I had the jar lids in it's really hot water I'm just going to pour that in and that's going to go ahead and cover my jars do not put cold water in there it's got to be hot water but now we're okay and it's actually going to be ready to boil so I'm going to put my lid on and set the timer for 20 minutes well here's the first six jars of our apple cinnamon jelly I ended up having another four cups of juice that I decided to go ahead and mix up with a box of pectin and I've got that in the canner I've got three more pints in the canner so we'll have a total of nine pints of apple cinnamon jelly so I want to say after I boiled the peelings that we kept the first batch of jelly that I did the other day I had seven pints now I will have nine pints so we've got a total 
of 16 pints of jelly out of just peelings that I boiled. Well, the last of my jelly is in the water bath canner and I just filled a big half gallon jar of regular oats for our um, cereal or for our protein bites and it looks like I could have probably got a little bit more in there but that's okay because I'm going to make some granola. Um, here we've got our crackers done and I've still got more crackers to do. The varieties of candies that have been on the shelf, the chocolate chips, the nuts, and we've got some chocolate covered caramels. We've got more stuff over here. And I still have a whole lot more to use my food saver on. But this is just my little workstation right now. And my jelly's about done, another 15 minutes, and I'll be um, completely done with making apple cinnamon jelly. And that's one more thing to cross off my list. But I need to find more jars. Well, I've been in the kitchen making jelly. Cowboy's been out here and made a whole wall. 40 foot long. I brought him a glass of water. <laughs> 